this video, you will learn about laboratory-based imaging spectroscopy measurements. Lab spectroscopy carried out with an imaging spectrometer allows us to exactly characterize the spectral properties of an object's surface, not only at one point, but on its entire surface and with very high spatial resolution. While a point spectrometer records only one spectral signature over a certain area, imaging spectrometers record an image of an object and each pixel stores an individual spectral signature. In today's example, we are using the high spec sensors, a set of two push broom scanners. In order to record an image, either the sensor or the samples need to move. Whether airborne or in the field, it's usually the sensor that moves. In the lab, however, it's the samples that are moved on this custom built rack. We call it translation stage. Let's take a look at the different components of the setup. Firstly, we have the particularly important light source, which consists of tungsten halogen lamps. They emit light in the complete spectral range measured by the sensor. Then, we need a white reference, in this case a zenith or spectralon, for which the absolute reflectance spectra are known. It must be present in every single image to be able to later convert the measured image spectra to reflectance. The white reference panels and the samples we would like to measure are placed on a movable table called a translation stage. It is moved by a motor, the speed of which is synchronized with the measurement speed of the high spec sensors. Both are controlled by the same software, high specs ground, which is also used to configure and start the measurements. In our lab rack, both the lamp and the sensors are mounted in movable towers, and both can be tilted to allow different illumination and viewing angles. We have two high spec sensors, one measuring the visible and near infrared light, the other measuring the shortwave infrared. Both signals can be stacked together by spatial co registration of the two acquired images. The sensors are push broom sensors, scanning the samples line by line while these are slowly moved under the sensor. Measurements with an imaging spectrometer are a good choice whenever a high spatial detail is important. A good example is the detection of small particles such as microplastics. In 2016, researchers from the GF said, the University of Beirut in Germany, and Remote Sensing Solutions GmbH took water samples in the river delta of the Po in Italy to determine the amount of microplastics admitted to the Adriatic Sea. The samples contain particulate matter extracted from water samples taken at the River Po Delta in Italy. The particles are extracted by filtration onto glass fiber filters. Natural organic material has been removed before by treatment and with a Fenton reagent. Can you determine with your naked eye which particles are sand and which are microplastics? A spectral analyst can do so by inspecting the spectral signatures of the particles recorded by the imaging spectrometer. They can be seen as spectral fingerprints, unveiling the chemical material of the imaged surface. Of course, it is possible to automate the material classification using chemometric as well as modern machine learning algorithms. The measurements result in hyperspectral images. Based on these, we can, for instance, generate false color composites that highlight potential plastic particles in red color. We could further classify the hyperspectral image using chemometrics or machine learning algorithms. During the classification process, each pixel is assigned to a class and displayed in the associated color. The filter shown here on the right-hand side contains one polystyrene particle, four polypropylene particles, and several particles of the plastic type polyethylene. Whenever you plan to carry out laboratory-based imaging spectroscopy measurements, these tips may help you. Use a proper light source that emits the entire light spectrum you want to measure. Make sure your environment is dark, except for the artificial light. There should be no bright, colorful, or reflecting surfaces nearby. Keep conditions stable, as subtle differences can affect your measurements. For example, operator, instrument, and even humidity or temperature in your lab. Also, make sure conditions are reproducible, in case you need to repeat measurements. Always put a white reference into each image to enable conversion to reflectance units. In case your targets are not very bright, you may use a gray reference with a lower albedo to be able to increase the sensor's integration time to improve the signal-to-noise ratio of your measurements. If possible, the white or gray reference should be present in every column of the hyperspectral image 
to be able to correct for differences in the illumination power. And finally, keep notes, otherwise you'll never be able to recollect what you've been doing. Good luck!